Greetings friends and welcome to the lock on rocket slash homing missile ability guide. In this video I'm going to show you how to make a projectile that follows a particular target and will then explode and do all the things a missile is expected to do. And not only that friends, but it's pretty much all we use is 10 gadgets. So it's nice and easy, nice and simple. Let's get stuck in. A woo woo! Okay friends, so step one is designing the rocket. So we're going to go into modes, sculpt mode. I like to use a curve. I put on a little grid snap and I'm going to go L1 and square. Kind of just make it about so. Then I'm going to switch to a uh, square shape or cube rather. Triangle, just cut off the little edge there. I'm going to give it, uh, I'm going to go cylinder. Also while we're subtracting. I'm going to remove like a little like hollow out a bit so this is kind of where the flames of the of the rocket will come out and then yeah friends that's pretty much it just the sort of simple design I'll turn off that good snap now and then I'll give it a little bit of flames coming out the back so I'll go to paint mode I'll get us the baroque sort of uh, fleck type get us a nice red or blue you know if you're going nice and sci-fi and I will just sort of draw it in a funky sort of a line it looks a little bit trash. Let me maybe use a tool, rule flex. Just do it like that. Straighten it up a bit. I want in square on the painting itself. Give us a few duplicates. Let's say inside a sphere. Reduce the spread so that it's nicely there. Then go to animation and increase it to. Yeah, whatever you feel is cool, 500-ish percent. Then we'll increase the brightness, but I would say don't emit light from glow. That way it just doesn't make like the whole scene super bright when it passes by, but it itself can be pretty bright. So there you are, friends. We have our, we have our little rocket. I'm just going to group these chaps together now. Okay, friends, so now we have this group together, so our rocket and our flame is one particular object, which is what we want. Next thing we're going to do is add in the logic. So we're going to go Gadgets, Logic and Processing, get ourselves a microchip. Inside our microchip, we're going to put down a follower. So we're going to go move and Output and get ourselves a follower. Next thing is that we actually need something to follow. So I'm going to go into Sensors and Input, get ourselves a tag, and we can put it down over here. I want in Square, rename it, and we're going to call it Target. Dope. And we can move the little the little bauble so it's kind of more central. And let's move a little bit further away. Alrighty, so now let's go into our follower again, L1 and square. And we're going to go down the D-pad and we've got our target tag. We're going to move strength up to 100%. And now if we press R3 to play test, doo -doo, we see that it moves there nicely, which is very cool. Okay, sweet. The next thing we're going to do is actually add in another thing from moves and output, and that is, you might have guessed it, a rocket rotator, seeing as this is, in fact, a rocket. So the reason that we have this is so that it moves in the right direction. So we're going to go L1 and square on our rocket rotator. We'll see that we've got a nice arrow there. We'll put our grid snap on quickly. And we're going to make it so that the arrow points directly forward. And you might say, mean lad, bro, what's the importance of this? And I shall show you in just a moment. But first, we're going to make rotation strength 100%, overall damping 100%. And you're going to be like, oh, bro, but what's the point of this, this rotator? Well, if I have the rocket like this, you see it turns towards the right position. If we don't have the rocket rotator on, and it sort of appears at a different angle from its target, it's just going to do that, which is a little bit, uh, little bit funky. So we're going to have this turned on. And we're going to have this pointed in this direction for now. Okay, sweet friends. So now the next thing is we want our rocket to, when it gets to its target, we want it to actually explode. So we're going to go gadgets, sensors and input, and we're going to get ourselves a trigger zone. Our trigger zone is going to detect a tag. We'll press down on the D-pad so that we get the target. And so essentially when the tag is within this particular range that we determine, it's going to do something. And the thing that it's going to do is emit an explosion. So move as an output, get ourselves an emitter. We're going to put that down just there and connect it to the trigger zone. 
Now, to get an explosion, we can make one ourselves, but I think for now, we will get one from the old MM Quick Start Kit. So we'll go MM Effects and get ourselves a nice explosion. And we can just put it down wherever for now. And then we will go Emit, L1 in Square. And we're going to click on this little object to emit, and we're going to select our explosion. Make sure that you set emit speed to zero, and you're going to place it kind of centrally within the rocket. Sorry, it's a little bit bright, friends. We're going to make it emit mode is once, and we're going to make the emitted object lifetime about a second. So after a second, the explosion disappears. But that's not all, friends. We're also going to add another thing for movers and output, and that is a destroyer. And this is going to make it so that our rocket actually gets destroyed as well when it finds its target. So let's have a quick test. Whee! Boom! So there we are, friends. It's really nice and simple. It's quite nice, in fact. But in order to integrate this into your characters, for example, you might want to add in like another piece of logic or two just to make it kind of a little bit more cool and sci-fi. You know what I mean? So, for example, if you were making a nice tower defense game, whatever it might be, you might have your like... You know, your missile launching um, tower, or whatever it might be. Or, you know, you're making your little self-defenses. So I'm just going to make a very rough little missile silo thing over here. And I'm going to make it so that this very rough missiles, missile silo is going to fire out some missiles. And it's going to fire out these boys. And let us go, like, over here. And we're going to go, woohoo! We'll just adjust it ever so slightly. We might get a nice grid snap. And have a time there. Or we might not use a grid snap at all. We might just sort of eyeball it. Which is of course totally cool. So let's have a check. See what this looks like. So we go. Choo, choo, choo. So that, that looks kind of cool. It's moving. It's kind of moving down a little bit. But yeah, so that looks kind of cool, friends. But I think something that also works quite nicely is if there's like a bit of a pause before the rocket actually sort of fires. So for example, let us quickly turn on our show and hide, preview invisibility. And now we've got our things that make us follow the target and point in the right direction. I'm going to give us that little pause that you sometimes get before a sort of rocket fires off. You know, it sort of gets fired and then it kind of chills in the air a bit and then it zooms off. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go timer. And I'm going to set this timer to, let's say, 0.8 seconds. And then I'm going to get ourselves, I'm going to get us a selector. And in the B port, we're going to connect the follower and the rocket rotator. So after the 0.8 seconds, it's going to go to the next output port. So here we're going to go shushwing, woo, gish, gish. So as you can see, it sort of, it sort of fires them, uh, and they sort of pause for a second before they, before they flame off. Look, if I rotate this, it might make a bit more sense. So it goes ding, ding, gish, gish. Kind of looks like a little bit of a torpedo. Okay, I think I'm going to make a few adjustments in terms of speed. I might make this a little bit faster, and I think I might. Move this around a little bit, ch -ch 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 -ching. and maybe also increase the speed of this emitter. And let's see what happens now. Ding, Gish. So I think it's pretty cool. It like gives a, a nice effect of that that sort of vibe. But I think something that's also important is to go to your particular object, and now you're going to make it movable. Now, in your B port of your selector. We're going to put down a little keyframe, and this keyframe is going to make it not movable. So what this does is, and we're going to connect up here. What this does is, it makes the initial rocket seem kind of just like a, you know, just like a normal rocket. It sort of goes up, it works with gravity, and then it sort of fires off. So let's give it a try. So as you can see, it's a little bit of a better sort of uh, feeling there with the rocket. It doesn't quite have that um, weird ground scraping maneuver that it had before and you can also do it like i don't know if you guys are super into science science fiction stuff but i really dig the show called the expanse and i really love how when they shoot rockets in that show they kind of do this let me just demonstrate i'll just rotate it so it sort of points forward and the rocket sort of comes out a little bit to the side 
So check it out, we're gonna go. I love this ish, bruh. I feel like it's so cool. You can also, if you want to be extra fleeky deeky, you can make it so that by default, this uh, the invisibility of the the old paint strokes is off. So we'll go opacity zero, and then for this keyframe, we'll make opacity 100%, so that it's like as you as the rocket comes out, there's no flames. But then the the flames sort of start as we go along, and as you can see, it's exploding as it reaches its target. And yeah, friends, I feel like that's uh, that's pretty cool. And that's really all there is to making a lock-on rocket. I feel like we've added in a few bells and whistles. And as you can see, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pieces of logic or ten little gadgets. Including, yeah, our little our little thing over here. You can also add this to your characters very easily. You just connect like a controller sensor's input slash output to this, an emitter like this. And then your character can be shooting rockets out of their arms or out of their heads or, you know, out of their little rocket packs, whatever it might be, friends. But yeah, that's all there is to making a homing missile, a homing missile, a lock-on rocket, whatever you want, friends. It is here and it is just as easy as that. Thank you so much for checking out this video, friends. I hope you found it uh, useful and interesting. And actually, one last thing I'll show you is if you add in other targets, it'll always go towards the closest one. So if I move it around like this, pew, 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 fire the rockets, bro. This is so cool, man. Yo, I enjoy this a lot. So you'll see that it's meow, meow, meow. It'll do whatever target is closest to this particular, uh, whatever is closest to the particular rocket. So it's sort of got its own like built-in lock-on system, distance-based lock-on system. And that's all you have to it, friends. That's all there is to it. I hope you enjoyed this video. And yeah, I shall catch you on the flip-flop. Peace out, friends. Hey, thanks for watching, friends. I just want to give a massive shout-out to my Patreon patrons, or as I like to call them, the Mean Knights. Thank you so much, Tap Giles. Ooh, thanks so much, Tap Sensei. Whoop, whoop, whoop. And Salt Devils Max, my first patron. Ah, oh, ye. Friends, if you want to support your boy and get access to some bonus content, consider becoming a patron. Thanks for watching, friends. Peace out. Thank mm -hmm. you.